Hello and welcome back. I'm Melinda Bigley and uh, I had a, something that I kind of wanted to show you guys today on um, the Altair, but it is something that you can do on Solaris, Meridian, Destiny, stuff like that. So it's obviously you can see it's just a little circle here, but it does take a few steps to create this. So I'm actually just gonna save that into memory. We're gonna go into IQ and we are going to go to the shapes key. <laughs> And we're going to grab the circle and I'm going to go to size and I'm going to size this all the way down to three and a half. Why three and a half? No real reason. It's just what I sized it down to in that last one. You can, you can do this to anything, any size you want. It will affect the amount of circles that you can put around this, however, so you can play with that. So I'm going to use that right there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to my line properties and I'm gonna grab the no so feature. I'm gonna say okay and go to my bucket and drop that on there. So now we have this circle here, but it's really only so that we know where to position other circles, okay? So I'm gonna grab another circle and I'm going to size this way down. In fact, I'm gonna size it as far as it will go. At least that's what it did last time. I honestly thought you could size these down even farther than this, but it didn't let me. Yeah, so that's that's a little bit less than half an inch. Okay. So we are going to go with that because that's what we have. So I'm gonna take that little circle and I'm just gonna bring that straight across. I've got my inch graph here. So I'm gonna place a circle on each y, X and Y axis here. So I'm gonna duplicate, and I'm just placing this in my, so that it looks like half of the circle and half, so that you've got um, this thing split down the center, both X and, uh, X and Y axis, if that makes sense. I, I apologize, I know I don't sound good. My brain is not functioning on all cylinders here, so I'm hoping this is gonna make sense. But I was thinking of this um, shockingly while I was, a, a, well, I wasn't asleep, but I was awake thinking of this and thought this would be kind of something that um, would be neat to do because what's going to happen is you're not going to stitch out this no so line, obviously, but it's kind of neat because you can still split your circles. So I'm going to now continue to duplicate, but I'm going to take them and place them, as you can see, in the corner. So I'm using this grid. I use my grids a lot for this exact reason because I get great symmetry. So... I'm kind of gonna take this in that 90 degree angle and, I, and because it has a little red box around it, I can fit that little red box right into that corner and it, it, it comes out great. Now, what I will say is this one I'm looking at right now, looks like it's too far that way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull it out and just use my, my um, because it, whether it is or not, it looks like it is. So I want it to look um, proportionate. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna do the same thing on this corner. And once again, that looks like it's too far toward the center of the circle, this large circle. So you can make those arrangements as you are placing these things. And that one's, that one's closer. I didn't actually drop that totally in the corner. Okay, that's good enough. So now what I wanna do is I want to, because I can't size this down any further, I can continue to place these circles in between those spaces, or um, and and understand this is is this is open to interpretation. You can do anything you want this, with this. And actually, as I was playing with this, I, I thought of like ten other things that would be fun. But since we're not going to do that, we're just going to continue on. I am going to place that in the center. But then what I want to do is just give this a little bit of a size increase. Like I said, I can't go de I can't decrease it. So we're gonna just play with the size a little bit. And now I am gonna have to relocate that. But now I got the size that I want, so I can just, I can just um, use my duplicate and drag and drop. You can use your little, um, as you know, you've got size here. You can affect the size with this guy right here, but this has the ability to toggle around, okay? As does the rotate, you can also go into that. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, but you can also, like I said, you can drag and drop. Sometimes that's more difficult if you've got a lot of shapes in your way because you can actually grab the wrong thing and then it's just kind of, um, uh, it's an embroidery 
mess, but uh, I think we can handle it. So I'm gonna continue to duplicate and place. And once again, I'm just kind of using what I'm seeing as the equidistant. Now, if I look at this later and it does not look equidistant, I can go back and change it. And I say this all the time, but for those of you who are new, save as much as you can. When you're in IQ and you're creating, you really need to remember to save as often as you can. Know something about IQ. You do not delete what you save in IQ. It pushes it out. So the last thing that you have in IQ, if you want to save the things you have in here, you need to go into your pocket, into your memory, and save it onto a USB. Um, just a quick aside, I would suggest also not only keep, keeping them on USBs, but also get um, something I used to use when I, I uh, was working a photographer. I would use an X drive, those external hard drives, and you can, you can label those and put these things on that. So um, you always have them because they're neat to come back to and play with. Okay, so we've got all this placed. Now um, we can go in and select colors. You can do anything you want with the colors. Um, and again, you know, as usual, what I'm doing here is I'm teaching how to use IQ in ways that you perhaps are not used to. Okay, so we've got the paint brush here. I wanted you to see what happens. If I use the paint brush, it's going to um, act as a paint brush, just as it looks like. And that's one of the things I love about Baby Lock. This isn't, it's not like you're doing code in computers. There are pictures, okay? So not that you guys are, you know, it's not like we're, they're dumbing it down for us. That's not what we're doing here. We are actually trying to make this user-friendly because frankly, I don't wanna sit here and have to, uh, have to interpret more than I need to know for my IQ. I wanna make this as simple as possible. And that's what Baby Lock already did for us. Now, I know that there's a lot to know here, but when we break it down, it is so much more user-friendly than any other machine. And I have owned other machines years and years ago, but they didn't even come close to how user-friendly this is. Am I biased? Absolutely. I am biased because I've had other machines and I know what Baby Lock does. So yes. Okay, so I'm gonna start dropping colors in here. And I'm gonna do a different color scheme than I did on the other one, just because, why not? And, and then in the other one, I was playing around and I duplicated this whole thing and I'll try it again in the next one, but duplicated the whole thing and then um, enlarged it. Oops. So that happens if you if you hit outside that little circle, it's gonna, it'll place that anywhere. Okay, so now you can see you've got um, the, we've got the equal number of circles so we can do that properly so that you've got, um, it's not like you end up with the same color against the same color, if that makes sense. I, I know I'm not making great sense, but most of you, ladies out there have um, stuck with me through all sorts of fun stuff so we are going to forge on I don't like that color let's pick a different one so we've got <laughs> let's do let's do a blue okay let's see if that darker blue let's try that okay now something that I'm just gonna not to be punny, but drop on you with this eyedropper. Let's say, um, let's say that I switch to, if I switch to, um, well, let's go in here and switch. I'm gonna grab a green, okay? And I'm gonna drop it in here. If I want to go back into my colors and select, I can do that and change the color. Or if I have colors on the screen, and this is once again, I'm, I'm kind of going off on a little tangent here. But if I grab that little, um, eyedropper, I can grab those colors and it switches it for me. So I don't have to go back in. I realize it's not difficult to go back into your colors, but if you're messing around and you're, and you're, um, and you're just kind of playing around with this and creating, it does make it easier and it is a faster little way. So that's what that little eyedropper is for. So, um, but what I am going to do is I don't like this dark blue, so I am going to grab that paint thing and I'm going to drop back to my bucket and I'm going to start dropping this in and we'll just do the blue and the green color scheme because frankly right now my my mind is not wanting to to decide specifically it's not it's not happy with what I'm doing here in the sense that actually that is kind of cute okay we're going to go with that so that is what we have again we've got um a little bit larger circles and um, and then a little smaller. This is as small as it's gonna get, and I think that's 0.39, I think that's what it was showing. 
um, the size of these a little bit bigger circles, I'm not sure. But let's go to next. And again, this is the Altair 2, okay? So that's what we're doing here. We've got this amazing machine, and I, I hear you guys. I know that you're out there and you've got your Altairs, and I love my Altair. I try to teach on as many machines as I can, um, and I try to do that as much as I can. So um, this is exactly what it's going to be on the Solaris, though. So if you're watching this and you're on the Solaris, just play with the same, it's the same thing you're gonna do. Okay, so there we go. We have created our little fun circle. It's kind of um, kind of solar system-esque. And now I'm seeing like 50 more things I could do with this. So I'm gonna have to show you this little quick thing we can do. So what we can do is duplicate this. I'm going to go to size because what I wanna do is I want to bring this back in. Now I'm gonna go to this little toggle switch. You see that it offset it when I duplicated it. That's so that you know you have two. But what I want to do now is size this up. Oops. Okay. So that's all. That that that's good actually. So you see that that's as much as that'll allow me to size if I don't go to this little guy right here, which will give me the greater uh, freedom in um, in enlarging and shrinking the stuff. Okay. So now we've just duplicated it. And I'm gonna say okay, but I want to go to rotate, and I think if memory, no, we need to do it a little bit more. Let's see what twenty percent go back again. What I'm looking for is to be equidistant between these now, if it's possible, and it depends on the size. There's a lot of variables in this, but uh, as far as the size goes, the distance between the circles and all of that, um, so it may not be achievable, but let's give it a shot. So what I can do here is go in smaller increments, right? And then I can look and see, okay, that's the center of that one. That is sort of the center, sort of the center. That's as close, I think, as we're gonna get, and that's not bad. And that is just due to the sizing that we used. So if, if you're looking at this going, yeah, that's super neat, but I have no idea when I would stitch that out. Um, I don't know, it's kind of cool. So maybe you, would, maybe you would stitch it out on the back of a jacket. I know this is kind of, um, and my guess is, my girl Patty at Baby Lock, she might like this because it's kind of modern, quiltish looking. Um, and actually, you could even put a center, you could even do like a circle in the center. It doesn't have to make absolute rational sense, um, obviously. And let's see what, let's see what we can, let's do something else. I'm gonna grab a hold of this one. I don't want that, I don't want that, I want that. It's not letting me grab that inside circle. Let's see what happens here. Hang on a second. Okay, that is that one. Okay, so I am going to duplicate that one. And let's go back to size. I'm gonna center that again and shrink that down, but I need to go to that one again so I have greater flexibility and bring that down a little bit more. And how cute is that? Now, we do need to rotate so we can get some yeah, that's fun. Okay, so I'm gonna size this back down and get some equidistance here. Just a little bit of distance symmetry. And now you're just falling down the well here. That that could be uh, maybe used in a psych test or something. So that's kind of fun. I like this. I, I again, I'm not. You know, you can you can take this, duplicate it, and. Um, duplicate the heck out of it and put it on the back of a jean jacket. Um, you could put a little Easter, I have a thousand things going through my mind and you could put a little Easter egg in it. You could do a whole bunch of things. Okay. So just really, honestly, this was intent. My intention in this was to get you using your IQ. I say that all the time, but it's fun. I, I mean, it's really fun to do and you can get lost. This is kind of a rabbit hole within a rabbit hole. When I say play in IQ, this is what I mean. Just start pushing buttons and see what you can come up with. And for me, just so you know, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna save this real quick. For me, when I start to go into that mind frame, I go into IQ and then I, I start here. And I look at these shapes and just kind of, I just kind of muse it as to what I could turn them into. Um, and you could take a leaf, you know, and in fact, I used this as a puppy tongue, no, this one as a puppy tongue yesterday for the one, and just flipped it upside down and got rid of the top part of it. You know, and that, you wouldn't think of an egg as being that, but it, they work out, you know, and I, 
all those can be used as different fun things. And actually you could use, you could do a baseball theme with these too. And a police badge, you could make, you can make a little badge, all sorts of fun things. Um, in fact, I have some on, on, um, in the uh, archives of YouTube. There's so many videos on there, but I did one that has little badges. And I did one for like a little girl's birthday party. And you, you take this flower and add this little bottom part to it and put her name in there. And you can, you know, that all prettied up with maybe some uh, King Star met metallic thread. And if you don't know what King Star is, look it up. King, it's just like it sounds King, it sounds King and Star. It's a polycore. Um, metallic thread if you're using anything else I, I'm just going to tell you I don't use anything else other than polycore or uh, excuse me king star because it doesn't break you're going to have breakage on virtually everything else and I've heard some stories about other ones but I still have breakage or have had once I switch to king star I have no problem because it's made exactly the way that embroidery thread is um, and there's a, a colored rice paper on the top of it sounds weird but it's excellent thread and it's a lot of fun to take and play with these things um, yeah, and you can, once again, I'll just finish that little thing right there. You can see if I want to bring in, oh, let's do the, the little, the little badge. I'm going to raise that up. So if you, if you, you do definitely need to size these down. Um, and this is my Altair, so I cannot actually use a magic wand on that. Um, I don't even know why I'm showing you this because I have a video on it, but because I mentioned it, I've got that little badge right there. And then I can grab my selection key and grab this guy, size this down. This is kind of just a little lesson in a lesson. I'm going to size this way down. This would be the little, um, the little ribbon on it. Let's stretch that out a little bit, bring it down and then grab that guy again. And I don't know if I can because I moved him so far up. Yeah, I think he's unattainable. He's up in the ether up there. And you can see how that cut him off. But if I had that whole thing there, you would just size this properly, erase that little line right there, and then you'd have a little badge and you can add stuff. So not the greatest quick lesson for you, but that is, um, that's today. I hope you guys had a wonderful New Year's and that everybody's doing well. Um, if you haven't joined So Blessed Quilting and Embroidery Facebook group, please do so. We do uh, lives every Thursday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and I'm hoping to do one tomorrow. We will see as far as um, if I have a voice and an upright, um, and that'll happen. Otherwise, I will let you know when that next one is. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Thanks so much for watching and for telling people about the channel. It's kind of it's it's been doing really well and I thank you guys for that because you're mentioning it so please do like share and subscribe that helps a ton and then I can keep making these have a wonderful day and I'll see y'all soon bye-bye